with us today. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure to have you. We were just talking backstage about how Joe is going to spend some quality time off the beach tomorrow with the breakers before she leaves. Pretty beautiful, isn't it? I like all the sea in the, in the background of the beautiful beach. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I want to get started from the beginning because you had an incredibly uh, different background coming into fragrance. So tell us about how you first came up with the idea of Jumbo in London, your first brand, which you did sold. Um, and what was the inspiration? Well, it, I'd love to think that there was a strategy and an inspiration, <laughs> and all, but it wasn't. I was a young kid. Um, I left school at 15, so no qualifications, no university. And I came from um, my two parents. My father was a brilliant artist, and my mom was in the beauty industry. But from the age of 11, it was up to me to put food on that table and make sure there was enough money to pay the rent. And it's funny, when people, when I go around the world now sharing the story, people assume that when I say I came up from a council estate, they think it's down to Nabi. Um, it was <laughs> It was the projects, and it was a two up, two down. And I think that that young kid knew the responsibility of having to earn money. Um, so when we look, when I look back to my very first business, I started out as a facialist in a tiny little apartment <coughs> that we rented. And um, I did people's faces, and as they would leave, I would give them a little bottle of bath oil that I'd made um, to say thank you for coming. And that bath oil was in fact not making ginger, and it's in these funny little plastic bottles where I would type the label, and I'm dyslexic, so not making ginger was spelled incorrectly every single label. <laughs> and and I sit there and I give them their, their bath oil. And one lady one day said to me, Can I buy a hundred bottles? So as in strategy, that that was my strategy. <laughs> it was and I think with a lot of entrepreneurial businesses when they start, it's survival. You, you 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 step one step forward, you stand in that spot, you survive it, you step one step forward. And that really was, was my story and how to get there. Absolutely. And you had no formal training, so how did you first start mixing the oils? How did you know what went together? Well, that goes back to my parents, so my mom. So my mom worked for this incredible woman um, called the Countess Lubati, and she was six foot two, in her eighties. She's a fake, one of the great fashionists in the doyens of London. So she would look after all the members of the royal family and whatever. And she was just this amazing, amazing human being. And she used to have a long white lab coat, fishnet tights, blood red lipstick, blonde hair. And her real name was Doris Hill, the baker. And she had created for herself this whole aura. She was the Countess Lovati, Lisa Lovati. And she, from the age of seven, I would go to work with my mum. And I said, the laboratory, she taught me how to make face creams. And what I didn't realise at the age of seven, I was severely dyslexic. So I couldn't read any notes, I couldn't read a formulation. But I had this incredible sense of smell. And she would take me into the laboratory and she'd say, she had a very deep voice and she'd say, Joe, what does this smell of? And I'd say, Madam, that is Bulgarian rose. And she'd say, Correct. And she'd do that one. That one. And I'd say, That's Chinese camphor crystals, Madam. And she'd say, Correct. Now I'm making a face mask. So at the age of seven, I made my first face mask, which I can make all of you right now. If I had the fridge in the back, I could whip, whip it up. And she, yes. and she was the most we that be fun to put face on. <laughs> we'll do that next time. Um, and she was just the most incredible human being. And she took, she said to me once, if you're gonna do something, do one thing brilliantly in life and the world will look at you with new eyes. And I lived my life through that. So that was the first time I made a face cream. Um, and then I would watch I would watch my mom, I'd watch her, and I would memorize everything they did. And I would um, attach everything to a sense of smell. So when the almond oil was being heated up for the face cream, I would know exactly the point at which to turn it off because I could smell the nuts burning in the oil. And to this day, I still create the same way. I smell everything and everyone. And um, my, my, nickname, my, my nickname in the house is Bloodhound. <laughs> oh, I'm not nervous. <laughs> and from what I read you had to drop out of school because of it yeah. and then your mother suffered a stroke when you were young and you had to then quit the job that you had then so how did that adversity affect you and even to this day? 
well, I didn't choose it. <laughs> um, I, didn't cho I don't think anybody chooses adversity, it comes to you. But you, I survived it. And, and I think that's often, the, you know, the, why does it happen, happen to us? I was the young carer, I kept, so my, my sister and I, uh, in fact I was, I was younger than that when she had her first stroke, I was, she was, I was 14, and I left school at 15. So it was really tough, and, and I would sit and watch my mum kind of rock herself back and forth in a chair. And my sister and I were about to be put into care, and how I did this I don't know, but I managed to talk them round, and I created this character that would come to the house to look after my sister and I. It wasn't, it was me. And they believed me. So we, I kept this together as a family. I got, I got her through school, and um, my mum eventually got better, but she was... Um, there's just some people in life, you know, where the pressures of life get to them. But I think I grew, I grew as a person during that time, and I saw, I, I promised myself that I wouldn't stay in that place. Mm -hmm. And I remember one particular um, incident when I was a young girl. I was in my bedroom, and you didn't have things as like central heating in councillor's days. And there was ice on the inside of the window. It was really snowy outside. And I remember scraping the ice with my finger and looking out and thinking, one day I will look back on this. I will get myself out of this situation. And it was this, I could feel this grit inside of me. And I was, you know, 12 years old. Um, but um, I, don't, I don't regret a thing. You know, something, if I have my life again, I think adversity, you, see, you start to see that resilience you, you build. And whether it's in business, whether it's in life, whether it's in relationships, whatever it is, you know something, don't be always frightened of tough times because they can often turn you around and make you. Yeah, absolutely. And there are a few more that I want to discuss later.